Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Workspace 365 webinar. My name is Rick. I'm an opportunity maker at Workspace 365. And that basically means that I help new partners and customers see all the potentials that Workspace 365 provides as an adaptive workspace. So uh, before I will start with a product tour, uh, something about uh, Workspace 365 itself. So we're active in uh, 14 different countries right now. Uh, we're really working on to, to widen our uh, horizon and go to uh, various countries with our product. Um, over 100 white label partners right now, and uh, we have a really eff efficient team, uh, which allows uh, us to optimize our product and platform in such a way that the end user uh, can simplify their work on a daily basis. So before I start with the product tour, a little bit information background about Workspace 365. So uh, we started uh, eight years ago because we saw uh, a shift happening and the shift was basically in the application landscape, but also uh, document wise and uh, other relevant content. It moved more and more into the browser. And when that happened, we figured if that is the case, what will happen to the traditional workspace we know nowadays? So the remote environment and which uh, various elements are crucial to uh, integrate into a workspace in order for an end user to do his job correctly during the day. So we started integrating elements uh, within the workspace to provide a platform for users, which will help them during the day to make their work as easy as possible. But of course, uh, it remains work in progress. So, so on a daily basis, we're really uh, trying hard to make new integrations and, and deliver content and information into the workspace uh, for our partners and also for our customers. So uh, for today, I uh, would like you to show um, uh, the demo that I provided for you. So let me just switch to the workspace itself. So I designed a demo um, um, and uh, as you can already see, the demo has a, a, a wide variety of uh, different elements that are integrated into the workspace. So I'm now logged on as Peter and Peter is an end user within the organization. And based on the role that Peter has in Azure, uh, he gets his applications that are relevant for him. He gets his documents that uh, he has access to, but also other relevant content for him to do his job correctly during the day, so to simplify his work. So if I try to edit, edit his workspace, you can see a lot of tells go gray, and that's because they are pushed by the admin. So Peter can move the tells to order them correctly for him, so uh, for in the nicest way that he would like it. But um, uh, he can't really erase them. So in that way, um, an end user or uh, a user can uh, really have only the relevant information that he needs to do his job correctly. So you can already see um, uh, different kinds of, of tells, uh, live tells, document tells and applications. So there's already a an, an deviation uh, happening. So, but let me just start with the application landscape. Um, uh, nowadays, we know basically two different kinds of applications. You have your legacy applications and your browser-based applications. So, and we found a way to combine uh, both applications and integrate them into the workspace. MoneyDance is an example that, uh, uh, of an application that runs in our data center. So what we do with the application is that we um, convert it to HTML5, and that allows us to basically run the application in the browser, although it is a Windows-based application. So we have the Windows-based look and feel, but it runs within the browser. We can do this basically for every application. So we connect our uh, client as RDP to um, RDS, and that way uh, it allows us to convert it to HTML5. So I did it with client as RDP right now, but we also have integrations with Citrix. So that way you can also use the Citrix protocol to uh, publish the applications uh, into the workspace itself. Okay, so besides that, um, a legacy application landscape. You also have your browser-based applications. So if there is an integration with Azure itself, um, it's fully accessible through single sign-on. But what we also added uh, on value to uh, the application landscape is conditional access. So as you can see here, I'm, um, I'm not allowed to open AFS software because I'm not an internet explorer. If I switch to, let me just switch to the admin Sarah. 
Ah, here is Sarah. So if I go to Sarah, because Sarah has all the rights to um, uh, put the conditional access in place, and I go to AFS software within the App Store, um, I can set certain restrictions on the application. So I can either choose on which device, operating system or browser an application is accessible or not. I can even put in a whitelist or a blacklist with IP ranges. So for example, I can imagine that some organizations uh, don't have, uh, they, they don't matter if you open an application within the organization, but if you're outside the organization or you're uh, on your way to, to work or something, uh, they don't allow you to open that application. So security-wise, we can we can bargain, we can give certain thresholds to the application itself. Another nice feature is that we also allow to um, uh, choose if you want to hide the tell or you want to gray out the tell. So one of the benefits of this is if I, for example, um, um, am working on my uh, mobile phone, I do different activities than I do when I'm on my laptop. So, and, and when that's happening, we can either uh, choose to uh, not show applications that are not really relevant for my phone and only show them if I'm on my laptop. So you can be, can be really creative with your workspace, so you can really design an other workspace within the same uh, credentials and account. Besides conditional access, we can give uh, a certain maintenance window just to um, uh, let the user see what's happening and why an uh, application is not available. So besides the application landscape, um, uh, we also simplified uh, document management. And uh, what I mean with simplified is that uh, we see that Office 365 is a really upward trend and a lot of organizations use uh, Workspace or uh, Office 365 nowadays. So, and uh, when you use Office 365, you get SharePoint and with SharePoint, you get um, a free storage basically. So, but if an end user uses SharePoint, uh, they often see it's it's quite more complex than the old environment they used to. And uh, we figured a way to, to simplify that and combine different sources in order for an end user to always navigate through the same interface. So what you see here is our own uh, uh, DMS, our document management system structure that we designed. And um, uh, the beautiful thing about this is if I uh, have here my, my documents, this is connected through OneDrive for Business. Besides that, I have all the SharePoint team sites Peter has uh, access to, and I can even integrate a file server if I want to. So that way we create a hybrid mode uh, that allows us to combine those different sources and put it in one and the same interface. So besides document management and the application landscape, um, um, we, we put it a level higher because our main goal is to provide information for the end user to uh, simplify their work. So we designed live tells. We have a lot of integration with an Office 365. So you can see here that we have a live tell uh, uh, of Jammer uh, that we can enlarge and even enlarge even more. So um, uh, we already uh, provide the information to the workspace itself without leaving the workspace. But well, we have also other integrations with uh, Office 365 and therefore I'm switching again to Sarah. So as you can see, Sarah also has a live tail for Teams and SharePoint. And um, uh, the reason why we designed these live tails is because we were listening to the feedback that our partners gave and uh, they told us that more and more uh, organizations use Teams. So when that was the case, we uh, went back to the drawing board and uh, we designed a, a live tail which directly allows us to see the different teams that Sarah is in uh, currently. But also, um, if we click on it, we can either open uh, teams locally or we can open teams uh, online. We can also open the, uh, uh, the documents that are uh, relevant for that team. And the great thing about this is if they open the documents, you come in the same DMS structure as I uh, showed you before. So for an end user, they always have the same interface um, uh, for every activity that they do. So it's, it's always clear for them and it really simplifies and helps them uh, to do their work correctly. So the same um, is for our uh, um, uh, email client. We have designed our own email client which has the basic functionalities of Outlook. But the great thing again about this is if we want to save or we want to um, uh, send a document uh, to someone else, 
Again, we come in the same DMS structure as we saw previously. So for an end user, again, it's, it's the same way of navigating to all those different sources. So besides that email client, we also have integrations with a Power BI. Um, uh, we have a calendar application, which also allows you uh, to have uh, shared calendars. But it's also uh, possible to create your own live tales. And we can create our own live tales through uh, iframes, so we can embed certain information, content, that is relevant for uh, an organization. So, uh, for example, I uploaded um, a YouTube frame of Workspace 365. But if you want uh, to bring news to the workspace itself. It's also possible to um, enclose information, news feeds through uh, RSS or SharePoint feeds itself. So that way, um, 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 uh, it's, it's in the length of our own vision that we want to bring as much possible information and content to the workspace. So they have one central place, one central portal to navigate to, to go to those different sources. So and as an add-on, um, uh, we developed uh, even uh, better things and uh, that's basically simplify line of business as you can see here right in the top. So um, uh, because information is more and more important, um, it's, always, uh, it's also really important to, um, uh, um, to give mutations to information. So what we did with Simplify Line of Business is that we allow uh, our partners or our customers to design forms and with those forms they can extract information or they can mutate information into a, a SQL database for example, but you can also uh, make integrations with a third party application. That way, uh, if you have uh, processes like time registrations, which are uh, from a high fre uh, uh, frequency, but um, they're not really uh, uh, quite reachable within uh, the process of the application. We can bring those processes to the front, to the workspace itself, and you can um, uh, do the activities uh, from within, this, within the workspace. So for example, uh, we have the expenses that Sarah had, and um, if I open the expenses, I see a quick overview of the uh, specific the details of the expenses. And if I open the application, I can uh, see more details, but I can also add a new expense or uh, I can change the current one. So that way we really try to simplify the work for an end user and always give um, 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 one portal in which they can uh, uh, um, do their activities. So this is one example of live tales you can make for your own. But we are also making integrations ourselves. So in the left top corner, you see um, top desk ticket. So we already designed a live tail in which you can see have an overview of the different um, um, tickets somebody has or uh, the user itself has. So we're a really innovative platform that always tries to uh, search for new uh, integrations together with our partners. Um, we think it's really impo important for us to, to listen good to our partners and to help them be successful with Workspace 365 itself, but also collect a lot of feedback for us to um, allow us to improve our platform even further. So I really want to thank you for your time. Um, I hope you uh, had a better view of Workspace 365 and the various capabilities that it has. And I will hope, you, hope to see you again in uh, the next session of uh, the webinar product tour. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>